Hey students, welcome back. This is part three of our video series on half angle identities. So we have another few identities to develop here. You don't have to write down the development. Let's figure out the identity for the tangent of a half angle. And of course we know that tangent is sine over cosine. So if we insert our sine half angle identity and our cosine half angle identity into this quotient, what do we get? Let's see. So we have tangent of theta over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2 divided by plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. Okay, if you have plus or minus divided by plus or minus, you really only need a single plus or minus. Because plus divided by plus is plus. Plus divided by minus is minus. Minus divided by plus is minus, and minus divided by minus is plus. Another thing is we can multiply our... Let's see here, what do we want to do? If we multiply, okay, I am starting that sentence over. I had to stop and think for a minute. What I'm going to do is treat this as a fraction divided by a fraction, and I'm going to change it to multiplying by the reciprocal. So we have the square root of one minus cosine theta divided by square root two, that was the top, multiplied by the reciprocal of the bottom, square root two, over the square root of 1 plus cosine theta. So based on that, we can cancel our square root 2's. And then what do we have left? Give ourselves a little more space here. We have plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. And I just went ahead and put them back into the same radical. And that is our tangent half angle identity. If you remember that the sine identity has a minus in it, and the cosine identity has a plus in it, and if you remember that sine or that tangent is sine over cosine, hopefully that will help you remember to put the minus on top and the plus on the bottom. Okay, we have a couple of variations on this. You've heard of rationalizing the denominator. It's something we do all the time. If a person went through the algebra steps to rationalize the denominator, they would get a new version of this. And also, maybe you haven't heard of it, but it's a similar process. If we were to rationalize the numerator, we would get another variation. So that gives us two other tangent half angle identities, and each of them is much simpler than the original. They don't need a plus or minus sign, they don't need any radicals. <clears throat> so I would probably use one of these two others much more frequently than the first one. So once you get all three of those copied down, we can go ahead and do our examples. Okay, we're going to use all three identities and solve tangent of 165. By the way, we could do it more than three ways if we wanted to use, say, an angle sum or an angle difference identity. But right now, let's focus on our half angle identities. 165 is half of 330. So the tangent of 165, let's figure out if we need plus or minus. 165 is in quadrant 2 and tangent is negative in quadrant 2, so we need a minus square root of 1 minus cosine 330 over 1 plus cosine 330. Let's draw a reference triangle for 330. 30 degree reference angle. We've got a negative 1, a 2, and a square root 3. So the cosine of 330 is square root 3 over 2. So now we have the opposite of the square root of 1 minus square root 3 over 2 over 1 plus square root 3 over 2. And let's do the thing where we multiply by 2 over 2 inside the radical. And now we have the opposite of the square root of 2 minus square root 3 over 2 plus square root 3. 
that is really a strange looking answer with multiple squ uh, square roots inside a square root. There is a way to simplify that by rationalizing the denominator and I just don't think it's necessary for us to take it that far, so I'm going to leave it at this. Okay, that was one of three. Now, how about if we use another variation on this identity? Oops, that got a little bit messy. Okay, let's look back to the previous slide. One of our other options would be sine of theta over 1 plus cosine of theta. So that would be sine of 330 over 1 plus cosine of 330. Notice the similarity with this version of the tangent identity and the other version. The denominator is the same, 1 plus cosine 330. And from our reference triangle, we see that the sine of 330 is negative 1 half. And once again, the cosine of 330 is square root 3 over 2. Whether this turns out to be positive or negative will work itself out based on these numbers that we just put in there. Multiply by 2 over 2. And we have negative 1 over 2 plus square root 3. Okay, that looks different from the previous answer. If you were to grab your calculator and put both of them in, you should get the same decimal for those as well as the same decimal for tangent 165. So that would be a great thing to check. But this one will not be too difficult to rationalize. So let's go ahead and complete that process. Multiply by 2 minus square root 3 over itself. Okay, my computer is doing its after-lunch sleepy lag again. So we have, if we distribute the negative 1 on the top, we have negative 2 plus square root 3. And then on the bottom, when we FOIL, we get 2 times 2, 4. Insides and outsides cancel, and then square root 3 times negative square root 3 minus 3. So that's just a 1. So negative 2 plus square root 3. Okay, one more time. Let's use the third version. Tangent 165 is 1 minus cosine 330 over sine 330. Okay, so that means we have 1 minus square root 3 over 2 over negative one-half. This one will be a little bit easier to simplify since we don't have a radical expression on the bottom, so I would definitely go with this one whenever I could. Multiply by two on the top, multiply by two on the bottom. Actually, you know what? Let's multiply by negative two on the top. Oops, that's a multiplication sign there. And let's multiply by negative two on the bottom. That way we don't have a negative one on the bottom. So distribute the negative 2 on the top, and we have negative 2 plus square root 3. And then negative 1 half times negative 2 is positive 1. So there we go. That answer looks exactly like the previous answer. And once again, you should double check on your calculator to make sure that they are equivalent to the first answer. Okay, we have one more example. I think one more. Let me double check. Yep, assignment is coming up. <clears throat> okay, find the sine of x over 2 given that the tangent of x is 2 and x is between 0 and pi over 2 radians. So we know that x is in quadrant 1. If the tangent of x is 2, we can make that the ratio 2 over 1. So we can draw a reference triangle for angle x in quadrant 1. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 2 on the opposite, 1 on the adjacent. And then use the Pythagorean theorem, and you're going to get square root 5 for the hypotenuse. Okay, so now to find the sine of x over 2. Let's use our half angle identity. And if x itself is in quadrant 1, then half of it is also going to be in quadrant 1. 
and sine is positive in quadrant one. So we don't need the minus sign, we need the plus sign in front of the radical. So we have the square root of one minus cosine of x over two. And then looking at the reference triangle, the cosine of x is going to be one over square root five. We'll call that square root five over five. So this time, multiplying by two over two isn't what we want to do. Multiplying by five over five is going to help us clear the fraction. It won't get rid of the radical on the bottom though, so we'll deal with that in a minute. Okay, so now if we distribute the five on the top, we have the square root of five minus square root five over 10. Okay, now what do we need to do if we don't want a radical in the denominator? Well then, how about if we multiply inside the radical by 10 over 10? That way we'll have a denominator of 100 and the square root of 100 is 10. So, inside the radical, distributing the 10 on the top gives us the square root of 50 minus 10 square root 5. And then on the bottom, we have 10 times 10, 100. So let's break that up into the square root of 50 minus 10 square root 5 over 10. And that's not one we can check on our calculators, but that's a positive. And in quadrant 1, the sign value should be positive. So hopefully that's a little bit of a check anyway. Okay, there's the finale of our lesson. So here's your homework assignment. Good luck on that and thank you for watching.